Hello YouTubers, fellow hams, possibly RV enthusiasts. This is a technical video and uh, you'll be able to tell, by the way, on my channel from now on, technical videos for ham radio or electronics are going to have my old thumbnail, which will be the green background and blue bar. Uh, that's also the title screen. Um, videos that are mostly about RV life or traveling will have the uh, multicolored United States logo as the thumbnail and the background of the title. And there might be a couple of other categories that I do an occasional video on, perhaps commentary or uh, binaural audio recording out in the field. Uh, those will usually just be a picture of a scene or my face. So uh, that's the, uh, one change to the channel, but that'll make it easy for you, the viewer, to choose which videos you want to watch. Uh, I'd say watch them all. I'm hoping that they'll all be interesting. Anyway, um, we're going to do a promised video here on hooking up the ICOM 7300 to the Raspberry Pi computer. And uh, I'm going to do that here on the uh, on the laptop connecting it to the Raspberry Pi. You may have seen, and if you haven't, um, I'll try to remember to put a link down below in the description. Uh, I did a video on using the Raspberry Pi headless for controlling your radios, where you uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi over the network using uh, what's called VNC, which stands for Virtual Network Computing, to bring the Raspberry Pi's screen, as it were, into a window on your computer. I'll be using that to show you what I'm doing as we hook up uh, the ICOM 7300. Now, the ICOM 7300 has a single USB connector on the back. That connector provides two primary services. Uh, they can be configured for different options. It provides an audio interface to the radio for your computer to send and receive audio, uh, and it provides a serial interface to your computer that the uh, computer can use for rig control, um, which would probably be the most common usage. Uh, it can also be used for keying the push-to-talk line, and I think for keying for CW. We'll be using it for CI-V uh, rig control data, where it'll be a serial port. So. Let's uh, switch over to the computer. I'll get the Raspberry Pi going, and we'll uh, we'll we'll connect up FL Rig and FL Digi, which are two popular um, amateur radio programs for the uh, Linux operating system and Windows and Macintosh. Uh, I'm I'm not going to go into Ham Radio Deluxe because that's really outside the scope of this video. We're talking about connecting to a Raspberry Pi, which doesn't run Windows. It runs uh, a version of Debian Linux called Raspbian. So your Raspberry Pi should have the Raspbian desktop already running on it. Um, you should have a USB A to B cable connecting your ICOM 7300 to the Raspberry Pi. You will not have to install any drivers. The Linux kernel already has the drivers for the serial chipset and the audio interface built in. So all you need to do is plug it in and your Raspbian um, OS is going to see a new audio interface and a new serial port. So let's take a look at that and I'll walk you through it. Okay, here we go. You're seeing the Raspberry Pi desktop in a window. And uh, what I just did is I did this command here, ls slash dev. Now the dev directory, that is where all devices appear. Now what looks like files in there are actually virtual files that represent hardware. That's the way Linux and Unix works. Everything's a file. I think I've mentioned that before, and for those of you that know this, you can ignore this. Uh, but if you create a serial port, a file gets created inside this directory. And if you wanted to push data to that serial port, you could just copy a file to that file, and it would go out the serial port. Everything in here represents a piece of hardware in the computer. It's a very useful thing, but that's also where you find you know, what devices you have installed. And if we look down here, we see... TTY USB 0 and TTY USB 1. There are two of them because I have two serial interfaces plugged in. I have one connected to my Yaesu FT817. The other one was created by the ICOM when I plugged it in, and it's TTY USB 0. You can find out which device your ICOM is creating by simply unplugging it, looking inside the dev directory. It's at the root of the file system, slash dev, 
and then plugging in your ICOM and looking back at that directory to see what file appeared. It's almost always going to start with TTY USB. Uh, so in my case it's TTY USB 0 is the ICOM's serial port. Once you know what the serial port is, you're good to configure your software. So I'm going to go up here to the menu and, and launch FL Rig. And it's going to come up and it's going to complain that the radio is not responding because it's set up for my FT817. But that's okay, we can change it very easily. Set up, transceiver. And here where it says Rig, I'll click that down arrow and I'll type in I to get to the ICs. And we'll just uh, scroll down and look for the IC7300 and there it is, it's supported. And then we need to choose the serial port. And remember I already figured out that it's TTY USB 0, so that's the one that I will choose. Um, baud rate, I've got the ICOM set to 9600 I believe. Let's find out. We'll hit the init button and see what happens. No. I'll try 19200. There we go. So obviously you need to make sure your baud rate matches um, the baud rate of your radio. And that's it. Um, FL Rig is now controlling the ICOM. If I come up here and I change the frequency, we should see it changing on the ICOM. Uh, let me see, I've got video of the ICOM's display. I don't know where I'll put it. Maybe I'll move this up here and uh, overlay the ICOM video down here. All right, so we should be able to control everything. That, well, FL Rig gives us a lot of control. Uh, volume. Yep. I'm sure you can hear that. Uh, we can control the power. Um, right now we're at 9% power. Mic gain, squelch, uh, notch filter. FL Rig gives you a lot of control over the, the ICOM. So I'm going to put this on 7070.15 and uh, we're on USB D, which is data, which is what we want to be able to uh, do PSK31. Okay, now I'm going to launch uh, FL Digi, and we're going to configure it to talk to the ICOM, to the, to the ICOM's audio anyway. Now I've already got FL Digi set up to use FL Rig for radio control, so. Once I set up FL Rig, FL Digi is automatically working. You can see it switched to 7071.5. Uh, we just need to configure its audio. So we'll go up here and we'll go to Sound Card and Capture USB Audio Codec. That is going to be the ICOM's audio. We'll choose that. Playback USB Audio Codec. And we will close. And now we're seeing audio. I don't know if you can see that in the waterfall. It's pretty faint. I'm on the magnetic loop antenna inside the coach right now. I don't have the big HF antenna up. But uh, yeah, this will uh, this will work. Okay, let me switch to FL rig. I'm going to go over here to the ICOM and I'm going to change my power level down to 5 watts. That's interesting, it didn't change here. We'll change it. I wonder, let's see, 15? Yeah, 15. So it didn't mirror back. FL rig is one direction. It controls things. So we'll go down to 5 watts there. And we'll come over here and uh, I'm going to hit the transmit receive button using PSK. And uh, yeah, we went into transmit mode. On the ICOM you can see the uh, carrier being generated. And I can see the power up on my meters and it's putting out 5 watts. So really just that easy setting up the ICOM 7300 on a Raspberry Pi. Figure out which USB port you're on um, by looking in the dev directory. It's going to be TTY, USB, either 0 or 1 depending upon how many devices you have. If the ICOM is the only device, it's going to be USB 0. Um, and then going in and setting your audio interface to that USB audio codec, 
Now I'm using uh, Port Audio in FL Digi, which is what I like to use because it, it lists all the devices by name. If you're not using Port Audio, that's what you want to use in FL Digi. Uh, it makes it easy to select the device you want. So that's it. I'm ready to uh, operate uh, PSK31 um, with FL Digi on a Raspberry Pi through my ICOM 7300. Just that easy. Well, thanks for watching. Um, this is my first technical video from the road. I'm in the RV at an RV park right now. And I'm going to do a little plug because it's a really nice little park. So there'll be another video following this one about RVs that'll, uh, that'll talk about this spot. Um, and uh, I, think, uh, I think it'll be interesting to those of you that are, uh, that are mobile um, RVers uh, in the southern United States, especially in Mississippi, which is where this is. So thanks for watching. 73 of the hams. And we'll see you on the next video from the old tech guy on the road. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.